uh, August 25th. I got it. Thanks. The August 25th uh, Board of Trustees public work session here. So we've got a public comment. Uh, anyone wishing to address the board uh, for three minutes? Anybody like to uh, make a public comment? Jay? Jay Deasing, a resident of the village on Old Town Crossing. Um, I did want to pass out a, um, a survey and site plan from um, one of the final <coughs> projects on Old Town Crossing because it's the first one I think that's been approved since the new law. And I think it's a good example because it kind of shows we've got more parking, um, off street parking. It didn't change the house size. It's still a seven-bedroom house. They got their swimming pool. They got their uh, pool house. They got their detached garage. But it kind of preserved the uh, the parking um, on the on the parcel as opposed to putting it um, all on the you know allowing uh, or requiring parking that probably would occur on the street. Um, and the house got dropped down to 30 feet. So I think, you know, we did okay with the first set of changes. And um, so I want to, you know, thank you for doing it quickly because um, obviously these houses are coming in all the time. Um, we still have to look at GFA um, and lot coverage uh, because these three parcels together are about a one acre parcel of land. And they've got 21 bedrooms, three swimming pools, three pool houses, uh, three detached garages. <coughs> so that's a pretty big density. Um, so that's a, an issue for another day. But at least on this, I think it's a, you know it, it worked out very well. So I just wanted to thank you. So first moral victory is that what you're saying? <laughs> um, well, it's it, I think it's, it's a victory a for the village. I really do. I think I think you know we we we're seeing so much on street parking yeah. that if we didn't do something immediately to kind of, um, you know, diffuse that. Um, it really would be irreversible, and we'd end up, you know, Forest Hills uh, just parking all all along the streets. And so, you know, this just goes to show that you don't have to change the zoning. You know, you can tweak it a little bit. You got six cars potentially on that uh, grid, and they can actually all get in and out without having to move other cars. Um, so it makes a huge difference. Well, it's nice to see this because this application was actually the, the springboard for me personally about looking at this stuff. And, uh, and so uh, I'm you know, happy that it's worked out. The, me the message was received, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. And the, you know, the original, the original um, site plan just had the stacked parking for cars. Yeah. yeah. That so. was, when I looked at that and I saw the number, that's what was what was bothering me about and you know and you apply it across the board with everybody and you think well this application and you see what's happened with other applications that uh you know that's nice that uh it's worked this way and what was uh, i think it's 34, 34. Old town Old town crossing town. on this particular uh, house is this guzzy you know, property yeah yeah, yeah. one of those Series of the, the three houses, three, going yeah, through. the three in a row. When you put them all together, you know, mm -hmm. it's. I mean, true. It didn't, it didn't impact the property values. It didn't impact really what what they uh, could could do as as proposed at that point in time. But it did. They did, were able to lower the house a little bit. They were able to put all the parking on site, which to me that's so uh, that's important. You know, and so and I know the ARB really. Stuff. The ARB liked the the design too, yep. so you know maybe maybe it forces people to a better standard, which I think we've got to do. We're not seeing the design here. Is it, was this the hip roof house or the one that was the four square? No, the um, four square is next to the it. The four square was next door. Okay. Yes. Well, the interesting piece here is that actually um, they have the uh, parking uh, ten feet off the uh, the property line. And the, the modification for the roof, uh, the law, but I'm just saying that. Uh, well, if you, but I mean, but if you think in terms of that, and you think uh, that uh, now they have three parking spots in, in the front yard, which are screened from the road, but having a wider driveway and affords them to park two cars side by side and do less front yard parking. That's the uh, mm -hmm. um, so. 
Jay, did you tell me that this pool house is going to have a cellar in it? Um, I guess it has a crawl space, according oh, to what okay. this crawl plan space. shows. Okay. Okay. So it did show some stairs going down, but, you know, obviously I think we've got to address at some point the, the lot coverage and how much is uh, <coughs> built because of the runoff and the, the uh, uh, you know, as, as Bruce said, um, Know, getting some grass back on the on the parcels would be nice, but yeah. um, you know it's a it's a step in the right direction, and and uh, I can't thank you enough. Um, I think it's really uh, really important, and it gives us some time now to really look at the issues mm -hmm. and come up with something. You know, we don't have the answers. You know, no one person has the answers, so let's all work together and try and come up with something that is, um, you know, working for everybody. It looks like a lot of stairs for a scroll, crawl space. Maybe yeah. it's just yeah. indicating a stairway, but doesn't it? Looks like that's, it goes I about mean, eight feet below sort of the thought. crawl space. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it made me think because one of the things that's happening is as everybody uses their basement for living space, guess what they don't have anymore? Basement storage. Right. So where do you put it? You have to put it. You can't put it under the garage because you've got a car, but you can probably put it under a pool house. So maybe that's something, yeah. you know, and I don't know whether that has an impact on the drainage on the lot, whether, uh, you know, whether we have a problem with somebody um, <coughs> having a, a basement in their pool house, uh, unless it has a heater in there, like... Uh, that's um, why I was saying I didn't see pool equipment anywhere. Maybe that's where the pool equipment is. Uh, yeah. Right next the to the bed stuff. Yeah, but, but also, the, a lot of pool Venus houses Carolina do have bathrooms, yeah, that's and so they probably need a hot water heater for Yes, there. they probably need a hot water cool heater. Control. So, mm -hmm. um, but just you know, the obviously as the building uh, techniques change and people build different houses than they did 15 or 20 years ago, these are all things that obviously yeah. are mm -hmm. you know not easy to keep up on because by the time you realize it, uh, 50 <coughs> houses have already been built. Right. Mm -hmm. No, well, I appreciate you coming in. Yeah, so I, I, I appreciate the great job you did. I know it was not, I'm sure, easy to uh, to get done, but I think you know it's nice to be able to come back in a month and say, hey, we, we have a nice um, result from the work that you did. And the good thing was you had an applicant who actually, you know, made the changes and, and really wasn't in here flipping out about the changes and stuff, you know, so... And, and also, it goes to show you can be done. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because there's still I mean, a lot of stuff here. They're saying, oh, it can't be done. Yeah. The house is going to be yeah. ugly. Yeah. I don't right. think so. Yeah, it's, it seemed like the ARB liked this house. And I, I unfortunately, I didn't have a chance to get a, a picture of it. But they they really were, were over the top about this particular house. So it seemed like it was the best one of the three. Okay. And it's the one that had the most, um, you know, restrictions on it. Okay. So that was, uh, that was good. But they still got everything they wanted. Yeah. Great. Great. Good. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Right. Thank you, Anyone Jeff. else from the public? Morris? Morris <clears throat> Bliss. I'm a village resident. We now have 21 new bedrooms. I believe Southampton Town <coughs> has a <coughs> rental permit process. Has the village ever considered, or does it have a rental permit? Uh, process right now? We do not have a rental uh, <coughs> permit process, but we are uh, having discussions around that, uh, and which are generated a lot because of Airbnb. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So. Anyone else from the public would like to speak? So, okay. All right. So we will. Um, Close the public comment section. No board presentations. No public hearings. Uh, nobody's communicating with the board. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> get into. <laughs> uh, they're communicating to us, but uh, in different ways. Yeah, we're gonna. We're, yeah, different fashion. That's right. So. Uh, <laughs> we'll get into suggested resolutions. And so. cool. <laughs> we're getting. The sewage problem is we're getting sued. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right, item one resolved the reading of the minutes for the public session of August 13th be dispensed with and that those minutes be accepted as filed by the village administrator. The actions taken at that meeting be and hereby ratified and approved. Got a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. Second. 
Favor? Aye. Aye. No, because I was not here. Right. I'm staying there, I'm so. Staying. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No. You don't want to vote against this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying from right, vote. I there you go. Yeah, I read everything. There's <laughs> a lot going on. <laughs> yes, there is. Item 2, resolve that the Board of Trustee by approves the establishment of a trust fund in County Cell Tower escrow T887 with the purpose of retaining funds to pay for the consultant expenses for a possible cell tower for the village. Got a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. Second. Discussion. This is um, a company from Ohio that has given us a $10,000 retainer to pay Richard Comey's expenses on any negotiations for a tower. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolved the claims for the warrant stated August 25th, 2015, totaling $348,132.75, Warrant 5 General Fund, $15,935.64, Warrant 3 Capital Reserve Fund, 3515 uh, Warrant 6 Trust Fund and the Village Payrolls through August 20th, 2015, be ordered, ordered and approved. <coughs> Excuse me, got a motion? I move. Second. Second. Discussion. Uh, item one, air and gas technologies, uh, breathing air compressor maintenance agreement for the uh, fire department, 2003-6175. Anger home improvements, work on the Lane planters, 13,500. CSA employment benefit fund, September premium, 24,459.38. Page two, coastal fire system, Scott Packs testing and maintenance, 3,861.30. Two payments to East End underground utilities for wire repairs, 1,300 and 2,400. Finance Manager Annual Maintenance uh, Agreement, 8,189. Global Montello Group, 2,920 gallons of diesel fuel, 4,909.98. H2M Architects and Engineers, payment on account for the Sewer District, 2,250. H4, Malvisi Equipment, Garage Supplies, 1,248.24. Nelson Pope and Boris, drafting up the asphalt uh, contract bid books, 2,100. Page 5, New York State Health Insurance for September 242,118.14. Page 6, PSE and e Long Island Collection Services for PD 6,370.36. Rapid Recovering Towing Services for July 2,450. Page 7, RS Sales, Park Supplies 1,166. Southampton Christmas Lights, Relamping the Trees on Job's Lane, $2,019. Sprague Operating Resolves, 3,001 gallons of gasoline, 5,017.10. <coughs> warrant is the capital reserve warrant and to Schiffer Engineering on account for the renovations on the second floor, 7500 Start Architecture, Ambulance Architecture fees for the New York Barn, 7243.50 and we'll floor you the balancing of the um, planking here in the Village Hall, 1192.14 Last warrant being the trust warrant, Center for Municipal Solutions, 2014-415, that's coming out of that $10,000 uh, escrow phone that I had just mentioned. Further discussion? All in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. Aye. Item 4, resolve that the Board of Trustees hereby accepts the donation of a Wells Fargo Express wagon trailer from the SVVA. Have a motion? Make that motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? I don't know what that is. Yeah, we had actually accepted this back in March, um, but we never did a formal resolution. They did a presentation, but I'm just cleaning up um, mm -hmm. on a resolution. So it's okay. already insured and you know, uh, maintained by the village. Okay. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolved that the Board of Trustees hereby approves the following budget adjustment for the fiscal year ending May 31st, 2016. An increase in highway contractual, $423,000. An increase in state grants, $233,000. And decrease in the fund balance, $200,000. Got the motion? Make that motion. Second. Second. A discussion on this. Yeah, what, yeah. what this basically is, we had discussed last <coughs> meeting that we're doing a tremendous amount of pavings for the, basically because of the storm damage that we had. So uh, Bill signed off on a little in excess of $900,000 worth of POs. And so what I want to do here is we, we have $513,000 left in the paving budget for the year. So I want to increase that by 423 to make up for the difference between the 513 and the POs that we have signed. We also have an approval for a CHIPS funding of $233,000 that was not budgeted for, so I'm recognizing that for the budget. And the balance will come from our fund balance of 200000 So this is a, a budget adjustment. It's not a transfer. For any line items, but just it's, you know, because we're going forward with the um, uh, 
and the paving. And, and, and on your yeah. other comment, I know on the, yeah. you want to mention Sag Harbor, right? Yeah. But I, I do have one more resolution that is more pertinent. Okay. Which didn't sure. print, so I'll, I'll pass that out. Okay. Uh, and yeah, that that's, that's that. good. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item six, resolved that the Board of Trustees hereby approves the following payments from the capital reserve account subject to permissive referendum. Shiffrin Engineering, 7,500 from the facilities reserve. Stott Architecture, 70,243.50 from facilities reserve. And Will Flory, 1,192.14 from the facilities reserve. Can I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, and the last one, for some reason, it didn't print on what you have there, so I just I passed it out. I'm sorry, I, I, I don't have to give you the copy. Uh, this is actually a, a, a budget transfer for overages. So it's resolved that the Board of, Tr Board of Trustees hereby approves the following budget transfer to eliminate overages for the listed line items. Increase in employee benefits workman's comp, 10,128. Increase in employee benefits LOSAP, 12,465, with coming from contingency, 22,593. Motion? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? Yeah, I just wanted to point out that uh, probably nine years ago when we first engaged John Lundy as uh, as our accounting firm uh, he came in and, and one of the things that he, he recognized is that the, uh, the the village at the time was doing year-end budget adjustments for expenditures and he had recommended that we got into doing this on a monthly basis Every time we did, uh, um, uh, you know, any type of purchasing where it exceeded the budget of that line item, make adjustments on it. And uh, I know that uh, Sag Harbor actually, uh, the village of Sag Harbor was actually cited uh, by the by the state uh, in reference to this because they were still doing the the uh, annual adjustments. So when we get into uh, and doing the budget transfers to eliminate this on a, every single meeting that we get into all purpose is to make sure that we don't exceed the budget line items that we've have and move money around so that way you have by law you have to have money budgeted in that in that certain line item before you can actually spend it uh, in a municipality it's always good to have that way right. in business too <laughs> and uh, and hopefully on your personal household you do the same thing but uh, but uh, we have a responsibility here uh, to the taxpayer to make sure that's done. And, and um, I know that uh, Sag Harbor's making the adjustments and stuff too. But uh, I feel very good because until John Lundy came and that accounting firm, we had been doing business that way with multiple auditing firms who have come through. <coughs> and nobody had said anything to us about that. And, uh, and unfortunately, John's not with us anymore, but he really uh, made a change, a, a significant change in the way that the village uh, did business uh, and, uh, and it, you know, we weren't, haven't been cited for that because of, because of that and the audits have come through. So every time we see these <coughs> budget transfers, that's the real purpose behind it all. So, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, you, you'll find out more when you go to the town and have a larger budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're in charge. Of it. No, but that's one thing we always credit and see we're doing with the, you know, with these the transfers and keeping up and the monthly reconciliations yeah. with the stuff we get, stuff that really uh, yeah. a lot of the places don't do, and that even right. we didn't do until we did yeah. a lot of stuff. So, yeah. but I think checks and balances. That's all. But yes, awesome. I hope to carry forward with me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 We do have uh, three discussion, uh, discussion items. items. Quasi-communication, so don't feel too bad that nobody's communicating with you guys. Okay. But, uh, first one's from the Southampton High School. As part of our annual homecoming festival, the high Southampton High School Student Council would like to hold a beach party and bonfire on Tuesday, September 15th from 5 to 10 at Cooper, Cooper's Beach in Southampton Village. Our students have enjoyed the beach party every year, and we believe holding the annual bonfire there would only add to our readily strong school and community spirit. Southampton Village Fire Department is giving us their support and would gladly be there to administer and control the fire. They have ensured us that they will regulate the size and location of the fire in accordance with Southampton Village specifications. They have also guaranteed to take care of extinguishing the bonfire and cleaning up any debris it produces. We would greatly appreciate your permission to hold this event as it would be a wonderful addition to our school and community. Thank you, Sarah Smith and Brian Tennedy. 
Yeah, I mean, every year they've done this. They've done this for... They do the bonfire there? They do a... Uh, they've, they've always done, done the bonfire over well, the school. Well, that's the homecoming bonfire. Well, I'm sorry. No, you're right. They have done the... Uh, have they yeah. done the be have they done the fire on the beach at Cooper's? That's my question. Well, um, that's funny because they they actually. Uh, oh, wait a second. Yeah, is this like what they're doing? Well, every every year they have done a back to school night. Right. Yeah, beach party. Yeah. Beach party. Is that what this where is? they've done a bonfire there. So oh, bonfire? I, I never knew right. they did a bonfire. Yeah, they've done a, they've done a bonfire there in the past. I don't know if they did it last year or not. So I mean I'm I'm not trying to keep them from doing any of this but my feeling about Cooper's Beach is um, and you know how yeah I am like so protective of that beach right. because no, we've had other people ask for parties there and we're not yeah. allowing that anymore yeah. I mean this is our school I get it yeah. but we've had people who have had parties there who have done bonfires have never cleaned it up we have ash and pieces of wood that are burned on the white sand mm. makes me crazy yeah so i mean if the fire department is going to clean all that up i don't have a problem with it but i want to make sure they clean it up well what do we uh when do we do this uh approve this pending uh, discussion with the fire department mm -hmm. about okay. location and size mm -hmm. and then um clean up yeah, because mm -hmm. is it like a normal bonfire, like to heat, or is it the bonfire, oh, bonfire, like well, where they're using, you know, as a well, part of the, the homecoming? You know, over homecoming. there they've. Uh, they're they're probably going to have pallets. Yeah, that's pallets what I'm saying. So is that what they're now bringing well, down there? Okay. Yeah, and I they're probably going to have pallets. And the other thing is, well, you, you know, it's been pallets. a very dry summer, yeah. and you know, if we ha God yeah. forbid, we should have some of those little ashes fly through the air and hit some of the dune grass or. I mean, I just want the fire department well, to know that they're just, there and they're... It depends. Because right. technically, the, the the bonfire that you do on a beach needs to be contained in a metal container. Uh, right. And uh, if, the, However, if they're However, we know in, that we have been at beach parties down at Dune Beach where they're not. Yeah. So. So, and they're supposed to be contained. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and if it's bringing pallets down and doing a bonfire like they've done historically at the homecoming... <coughs> right. Oh, uh, night, and it's something that's uh, not yeah, appropriate. Yeah, I mean, I don't have a problem if it's in a, one of those metal containers yeah. and they have logs. Yeah. I mean, as long as they get that cleaned up, because it's a mess. Yeah. The next well, day. we should specify it as logs yeah. only, because it's right. What kind of bonfire are you talking? Leave nails everywhere. The typical right. small kind to, to heat or the, the huge thing, which is part of the And that's a good route. question, Rich, because if it's just for everybody to stand around and get warm, that's one thing. Yeah. If it's just to have this huge fire on the beach, it's another yeah. thing. It's dangerous. So why don't we approve the party? We'll hold on to bonfire, <coughs> and then cause we actually will have another meeting before the uh, before the fifteenth. Okay. And uh, and then we can we can have a discussion with the fire department and the school, and I can call Brian and find out what his thought process is around this. School over here. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh, come on, come on up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thank glad you. you're raising your hand. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> your protocol. I didn't want to. Okay. Oh. Uh, thank you so much for um, your discussion and okay. your time. I'm Sarah Smith, okay. uh, the Sorry, advisor. Sorry, I didn't realize who you were. <laughs> no, Sorry that's about no that, problem. So. <laughs> uh, the advisor for student council at the high school with uh, Brian Tennedy yeah. and Tim Shrek this year. Um, what our thought process was is that, yes, you're exactly right. Historically, the bonfire has been at the high school. For some reason, over the past couple of years, our attendance has been down a little bit for that. But the attendance for the Cooper's Beach Party, which we've now incorporated with homecoming, because homecoming has traditionally been, the past couple of years, the first week or two back to school. So now we have um, been doing the Cooper's Beach Party to kick off homecoming. Mm -hmm. So um, we were envisioning <laughs> though um, I absolutely see some of your points, having the bonfire at Cooper's Beach and sort of doing one big event to kick things off yeah. for homecoming. <clears throat> um, we definitely considered the idea that the bonfire certainly would not be able to be as big as it is at the high school, 100%. Um, however, I think... Uh, if the only thing that we could do would be a three by three, there's probably going to be um, maybe over 
150 students there, so that might be a little small. In that case, if, if, um, if that would be the only thing it would be allowed to do, which I understand, we would probably remain and have it at the high school. Um, so the fire department is, um, they uh, gave us their uh, blessing that they would be there to control it and help clean up and um, everything that would be necessary for that. So I don't know if that would um, be a different situation given the fire department being there. Well, they wouldn't I, I be don't there. Know. So you're saying you ran it by them, and they, yes. they said you up for the beach, and yes. the size and scale and, of it. And yes, and they they I ran it by them in terms of would they be willing to support us mm -hmm. and be there, given whatever specifications. Well, they would be anyways because they're always there when you have yes. it after school. So. Yes, and exactly. And that's why the school makes more sense because it's just accessibility to a large fire. The beach is is you know should it get oh. out of hand, um, we don't have all vehicles that can yeah. access it. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm surprised they. Actually the thing that. is, I don't. I know the bonfire over mm -hmm. at the school is very tall, and it shoots way up in the air. It's a bonfire, yeah. it's yeah. A, and, it, and they're, the kids will yeah. love that. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to have something on the beach and a three by three, if you had three of them, right. it's bigger. But I don't want a whole bunch of pallets right. piled sky high so that yeah. this huge thing goes up in the sky. I mean, if it's for warmth and everybody wants to stand around and feel the warmth of it. I don't have a problem with that. I think, yeah. like, but I yeah, do I it's think it's the same the bonfire at the at the No, high no, I don't think they were envisioning something of that size at all. Mm -hmm. Um smaller, maybe a happy medium in terms of Yeah, but you also have to understand when they pile those pallets up and do them in such a way, all right. of that has to go somewhere. Right. And it goes into our sand. So we have to like keep it from going into the sand mm -hmm. somehow. That's why we have those containers. It has to be contained. Right. So that's a little, yeah. Yeah, yeah. very good points. Mm -hmm. So yeah. why don't we do this? We'll, uh, let's approve the beach party. Okay. okay. And then what we'll do is uh, meet we'll with the fire department and, uh, and then talk about sure. how and if and where we would do uh, the bond fire okay. component to this. Right. And, um, just for our scheduling so the students and parents sort of know what's going on, do you happen to know when you'll be able to meet with the fire department or? Um, as, as soon as possible. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. that's yeah. no problem. I'm yeah. not rushing. I just wasn't yeah. sure. If I mean, I, we're going we to want to get the fire marshal involved also okay. because all bond fire permits actually get signed off on by the, uh, the fire marshal. Okay. That uh, like parties down on the beach, so you'll get a bonfire permit okay. uh, on that. So uh, we'll, we'll know we're definitely locking in to the, to the 15th for that Tuesday. Sure. And okay. uh, for the, the back to school piece. And, and you know, we'll, right. we'll work on the bond because I agree that if we st mm -hmm. we're stacking up pallets and stuff, yeah, it's, no, it, I, I it's understand not going to be, uh, not gonna be good. It's not, our, it's not the typical bonfire we allow yeah. on the beaches. And normally we, it's we don't allow small, really any at yeah. a small thing that uh, people are making cooking s'mores around and stuff like that so mm. yeah okay sure. so maybe you get a hundred uh, s'more cookers down there so <laughs> a couple different bomb sticks so. I, yeah. I, if, I, if I could I just would like to take a second and thank you for all the support you gave us for the prom and holding oh. the prom at the Southampton Art Center it was yeah. a huge Roaring, <laughs> pun intended, yeah. uh, success. Um, and the students loved it, parents loved it, teachers loved it. So uh, we can't thank you enough. So well, I actually took my wife to the prom. I know, you there. guys came to the prom. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I tell you what, uh, actually, I was so thrilled by that. It yeah. was such a, an exciting night, and the way the kids were, and the way they all handled themselves with you know, grace and dignity, and the way the community came out to support them. Uh, that's exactly what we want that building used for is community events like that that uh, probably first time a lot of people a lot of those kids have ever been in that building right and some of them had grown up going there as the right. parish art museum so it was very special for them yeah. and we're hoping to do the same thing this year so well, thank you again for so all too. your support that's great so okay thanks. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you thank you okay so I'll make a motion to authorize the uh, uh, Homecoming activities uh, at the beach party on Tuesday, September 15th from 5 to 10 at Cooper's Beach. Second. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Next one is from Cook Marin. Cook Marin Associates is interested in having our end of the summer barbecue at Cooper's Beach on one of the following dates, 9-9, 9-10, 9-16, 9-17 from 4 to 7. We expect to hand around 45 employees attending. The food will be supplies in-house. We would like to serve beer and wine as well. We would like to request access to both the bathrooms and electric. Any questions, please call Rebecca Roscoe. Have we ever done this? I've never done this before. Then. No. Um, we, uh, I prefer to keep like all business things like that no. at another beach. Mm -hmm. Usually that, that's why yeah. we have Doom Beach for the bathrooms. Right. The only, the only thing we allow, I think, is the hospital, right? The yeah, the hospital. Goes that's down. the only thing we allow yeah. is something like that. Right. And it's because it's the hospital. No problem. Yeah. And alcohol is prohibited at that beach anyway. Yeah. So. And the last one is the uh, Flying Point Foundation for Autism Walk on September 19th, 9 to 10.30. Roughly 125 participants. That's the, uh, yeah, it's a, this actually only goes into the village uh, just for a little bit on, uh, on the Kapog Road. Uh, so it's, you know, Flying Point to... Uh, but uh, it's like, no, uh, it's really, there's no police support. Well, I think we've had police support there before um, at a couple of the locations. <laughs> yeah, because I remember some of the guys made fun of me as I'm moving it. It's not checked off. Tortoise's pace over there, so. <laughs> <laughs> Flash. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> uh, but they do this every year. So uh, I'd like to authorize the uh, Flying Point Foundation for Autism on on uh, nine nineteen in accordance with the uh, their application. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That's the. Uh, Bulk of our hefty agenda here. <coughs> okay, comments from the board members here. Trustee Strumsky. I'm good. Okay. Trustee Erdman. Um, you know, I, I had a conversation with a guy that I met and I, I didn't know him, he didn't know me, had no idea where I was from. One of the great things that he talked about was that he was out here visiting the Eastern Inn of Long Island. And he was absolutely amazed by the village of Southampton. And I didn't meet him in the village of Southampton, so he had no idea of any connection here. He talked about, you know, how beautiful Lake Agawam was and the park was so nice. And what a great job uh, they do decorating and doing all the plants and flowers and and keeping the streets clean and, and striping the roads and so forth. So uh, I've just got to say, you know, a real good job to all our departments that have done a fantastic job this year. We had, I think, more density than we've ever had in people, and yet they kept the place looking really terrific. It looks really nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, they really have. I'm glad you pointed that out, so, right. yeah, thanks. Uh, Nancy? Um, well, I wasn't here at the last meeting, and I'm kind of unsure. Did we talk about at any one point, because I can't really remember on this, um, did we talk about the dedication of the three workforce housing houses up on Bailey? Um, I think we did. We, yeah, we, we had the we uh, did this first conference. Well, there. something yeah. came up, and I, I, I actually <clears throat> was thinking and thinking and thinking about it. I sort of stayed after, and we were talking, a few of us were talking, and you know, the town has, um, and it, it doesn't really work, but I want us to think about this too. The town allows an accessory apartment structure on properties, mm -hmm. and they allow up to 1,000 square feet. Now, obviously, the smaller properties would not be able to handle that, but some of our larger estates would be able to handle that. And in the past, they had that, and some of them are pre-existing. But we have some newer properties that obviously could have an accessory apartment or an accessory structure, which would be like a cottage on their property. The town allows 1,000 square feet for that. But the, the problem with it is, and I mentioned this, is that it has to be, 
the, the property has to be used by a year-round person. So I said, in other words, if you were the owner of the property and you lived in Southampton year-round, you can have an accessory apartment that you can have your help live there. You could rent it out to some people who are looking to, are looking for a reasonable rental because they work here, live and work here. Um, but it's only if you live here year-round. And I said, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, and mainly because not many people I know can afford a six to eight million dollar property that they can put their 1,000 square foot structure on that they can use, that they live there year round. They don't. So I think that need, I told the town they need to do <coughs> that again. And I'm, hope, I'm glad you're listening, Rich. Um, and I think we need to look at that too. We have an accessory apartment that is very tiny that you can have. It's not good enough. And I think uh, the biggest fear that everybody has is they're going to rent it out seasonally. And I think that a lot of these big estates, they're not interested in renting that out seasonally, but they would be interested in maybe having some staff live there if we allowed to do that. Or they might be interested in renting it to a landscaper or to a couple who, you know, might work somewhere within the community. It's a thought. I think it's something we should look into. Um, and by the way, I thought it was very interesting. They allow a thousand square feet guest house on their property, and they do not include closet space <laughs> in their GFA, which I could not even believe. They don't include closet space in the GFA, and I said, "You don't include closet space," and they said, "No, it's not habitable." That's the answer. But maybe it was to be able to get a little more square footage yeah. wow. enough. So I thought that was interesting. But anyway, it's a thought. I thought, you know what, we might have to go back to the way it was, you know, in order to get some of these cars off of the road, because we all know what the workforce is in the morning. And, uh, you know, and, I, and I'm hoping the town's going to take a really good look. And this all came up, I mean, it came up because I have a property that, you know, is a, over, in a, uh, over two acres. and. People are looking at it, and they want to know what they can do there. And then another friend of mine who redeveloped, I mean, he owned a house, but he, he added on to the house down on Watermill Town, which is in the town, and he has above his two- or three-car garage a space that's not finished. And I mentioned it to him, and he went in. He said the only way he could finish it, and he said, I'd be very willing to rent to somebody out here. There's probably a young couple here who would love to have that space. I'd be really happy. I'd give them a really good rental. I'd be happy to have somebody on the property on a year-round basis. And when he went, they said, no, you can't do it because you don't live here year-round. So it's wrong. It's my feeling. And that's what yeah. I want to say. All right. Good. Okay, <laughs> hey, Bill. I like what Rich had to say, so I'm going to uh, <laughs> repeat it. <laughs> Actually, if I could, yeah, I didn't remember one thing. Could I make it already back? Too late. <laughs> <laughs> Quick. I just, I, um, I just wanted to recognize, uh, I believe it was yesterday, perhaps, a uh, 20-year anniversary of the uh, Sunrise Highway fires, uh, oh, the big yes. fires. So it was wow. yesterday, this weekend. Yeah. I forget the exact date, but around here is a 20-year anniversary of that. So. In light of that, I just want to thank all the firefighters and first responders who did respond to that and continue to respond every day since then, uh, just on our own level. We're up over 800 and something, almost 840 calls for the fire department. There are times it took a whole year to get to that we're yeah. in August. So, yeah. um, And these aren't, a lot of it would be false alarms. There's a lot of carbon monoxide calls, a lot. Mutual aids and fire. So there's actual... You know, there's a lot of stuff going on <coughs> with all these nice new multi-structured places being built. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But that's all I want. So, again, uh, thank you for all the service and and, uh, and the ones who helped 20 years ago. Put that out. So Bill, did you want to follow and put that? Sure. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess I'm going to just review what he said. Okay. okay. All, right. Go with that. okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, all well, right. Just do a follow up to uh, what Nancy was talking about an affordable housing piece because we had the uh, sewer district uh, presentation at the uh, at the uh, planning commission on the 12th. Uh, it was the day before mm -hmm. our previous board meeting, so we're, we're starting to do follow up meetings around that, uh, taking the comments and and uh, and trying to make some modifications in the the, the way so that it's paid. 
and uh, going to be next steps around this and develop a, a next step plan that I'm going to be pushing heavy on because mm -hmm. I believe that uh, this is something we really need to do for a few things. One is we have a responsibility to clean up our waterways mm -hmm. and continuing to dump sewage into the ground uh, that's untreated uh, is a having a long-term very negative impact on our, our waterways which leads over into our drinking water which uh, makes me very concerned about the future of Long Island especially for our children and grandchildren and uh, and so uh, you know we budgeted money for this every year we're going to continue to push I think H2M did a great job mm -hmm. in the presentation Paul Travis who was part of that was uh, Chair of our Planning Commission was he did an fabulous. Job. He was on News 12. Yeah, and explaining it all. Did a very, very good really job explaining was, it. Um, wow, I mean, we are so lucky to have that man. So, really, is part of part of this village. So, um, the second thing is that um, on the 16th, on Sunday, did the uh, uh, re uh, revealing of the historic marker for Pierce Concerts Homestead. And uh, I want to congratulate that entire committee, thank Brenda Simmons for uh, the work there that, you, that you've done, and really, um, and the dedication of Pond Lane to Pierce Concert. We'll get that sign straightened out the right way. So, <laughs> oh, they did. Okay, good. But you did a fantastic job, Brenda. And, and uh, unfortunately, I wasn't there. I was on vacation. I know Rich wasn't there. Michael was working. Nancy was hit. Laid up. <laughs> Laid up. Oh, you were there, Michael? Oh, okay. I thought, sorry. I wanted to be there and, and I told uh, him. Uh, did an unbelievable job. Uh, Gee, right. really? Yeah. So. Really quite passionate. Yes. Oh, well. It's great. And, uh, and Tom Edmonds, you know, this yeah. village, I'll tell you what, uh, uh, Brent and I were just talking about Tom Edmonds, who's the executive director of the Historical Museum. Uh, he has been everything we ever wanted in that spot and more. And uh, we're very fortunate to have him around. So uh, thank you, Brenda, for everything that, that you did. And then finally, you know, it's uh, on a sad note, but uh, Princess Hell from the Shinnecock Indian Reservation, mm -hmm. who passed away, uh, and today they had the um, uh, the ceremonies for her and, and the services and fortunately I was working all day and unable to make it but uh, so she fine. was a, a big part of this community mm -hmm. she was a fabulous person and uh, and so <coughs> as they you know they recognize it's not just her passing but her moving on to and uh, she was a real uh, kind and gentle person and helped a lot of people and, and she will definitely be missed in this community so my thoughts go out to her family and uh, the entire Shinnecock uh, Indian res uh, Nation and uh, and know that the village of Southampton uh, is is sorry for not having her around because she was a really just a fantastic person so uh, with that being said uh, we'll move on to a final public comment section since we don't have anybody from the public here. I'm going to assume that no one wants to speak. So um, <laughs> I'm going to make a motion to adjourn to executive session for the purpose of discussing personnel matters involving village employees and legal matters. Second? Second. Okay. Aye. Aye. Aye.